two, one. Oh shit! Blo blooper <laughs> headphones come out right off the gate. Right off the gate, starting off strong. Yeah. Guys, you gotta you gotta be kidding me! Now there is no way right now. The the Scotty Hahn has stopped by the studio. <laughs> you gotta be. These. You gotta kid. Can you pinch me right now? Just a little uh, little pinch. Boy, that's gonna be this rock solid. Oh, I can't even. Yeah, <laughs> this is uh this is real uh. Scotty Hahn is here. Yeah. Say hello. Hey, how's it going? What's up, Mike? If you guys don't know, um, Scotty is a living legend uh, in the downtown streets of Wichita. Downtown. Wichita comedy to uh, be exact. And I don't want to. I don't want to go over his accolades. Um, acc I think that's the word, right? The accolades. I have none, so it's okay. None. Um, mm -hmm. Just uh, 2019 Wichita is the funniest person. Half Dave Gerbenik tied me with the scorecards that year, and uh, yeah, that was a fun night. I, I miss I, I miss stand up a little bit. Um, right. So, yeah. Um, anyway, if you could, if you could, because there's like, is that how the kind of the Facebook? I want, I don't want to say war, but between you and Dave going back, is it because you share that? I, it's a look. Yeah, I think that's a, a lot of it. Yeah, like sometimes I'm not gonna lie. Sometimes it gets a little bit annoying. Like. Uh, roast me all you want i love you i love dave uh it's like a profile picture it's like man like that's not really the playground but you know <laughs> and, and i guess i guess like i can't take the heat i am a softy i'm a millennial like what do you want me to do about it like i was raised by a mom so you know, I don't know. <laughs> if you if you could go back so you the crown would just be yours what it's like one thing you would have done um, different that night uh, as soon as i had to give my uh little like thank you or whatever and like say something into the microphone i do wish i uh said uh just take it to a two-thirds vote uh with the judges and i wouldn't have cared if i had lost because i would have just done it again because now i can't do it anymore because it i'm technically one of the winners so uh, yeah and it's not it's i don't know it's it's a weird thing because i try as i get older i'm trying not to be competitive uh as much um, because it just shit buries up inside of me and uh, eventually it explodes. And uh, this is not plugged in. Uh, <laughs> it's, I think, it, it, I mean, a lot of years of shit that was mostly my fault, but just shit was not going well for me in stand up comedy in my first few years. Um, and it was mainly due to me getting blackout drunk and acting like a goddamn fool. But so it just winning just, it was just for a personal goal. It just felt nice. It was, it was, it was really nice, you know, from, from my perspective, because me and you've probably only acquainted be friendship in like a year or so, maybe a little longer yeah. than a year before. Um, Cause you weren't, you, I didn't see you around for a little and then you started coming back around and I've never been invited to the big dance, the um, finals competition. I always like show up two, three, four weeks. No, I don't advance. Um, so I've never, I didn't know there was four that was, judges. That, so. was, that was the first time I ever made the finals. Um, I, so basically, okay. So here's my thing about the contest in Wichita's funniest contest. First of all, Lauren Michaels is not sitting in the back waiting to sign anybody uh that's the saturday night live head guy if anybody's wondering um basically what i'm saying is like the competition is solely for the purpose of putting asses in the loony bin seats that's that's the only reason no it's not like a pot shot it's business like you know and you got so october get, november it's full house. right right yeah. exactly like week after week just sold out yeah, yeah it's it's yeah it's a great time um my thing about that particular day on the finals. So, uh, what did you have for breakfast that day? Just I don't remember what I had for breakfast, but lunch. But, okay, uh, I had a bunch of barbecue uh, <laughs> from uh, Pig in Pig Out, and I went back. Wiz, yeah, yeah, Wiz, Wiz, Wiz if you're listening, uh, we love you. I went after that. I ate a bunch of barbecue. Went to uh, Megan Welch's house, and we watched uh, some Castle Rock, and I took a nap. 
for like an hour and a half, two hours. And we went to the show and the rest was history. I get there though, everybody's like pacing around, everybody's reading their word and stressing out about this thing. It's like, dude, this is a sold out show with a hundred percent capacity of these people. They want to laugh. That is rare in Wichita, Kansas without a pandemic, like, which it wasn't the pandemic in 2019, but I digress. Let's just have fun. That's, that was my whole, that was my whole approach. I just want to do my set, tell my jokes, have fun. And that was the result. So yeah, because from my perspective, beautiful story. Um, <laughs> from my perspective, like I, it's like I see Scotty coming around, and I, I've been showing up for a couple of three, three and a half years now. And I'm like, who's who's Scotty? Like I'd heard the name, um, and it's like Scotty's coming around. And I, from my perspective, I was like, that guy just won like comeback player of the year. Yeah, it was Alex Smith. Uh, yeah, yeah. yeah. You well, get the ESPN 30 for 30 because I'm like, here's this guy I don't know. He starts coming around. He wins. Like, I'm just like, comeback player of the year. Yeah, I, I hope I didn't upset anybody last year because I feel like there was a couple people that were like, this should be the year, and I just come back like a dick. And <laughs> He's a phantom. Yeah. He just, he just well, swoops it. Well, I uh, – yeah, I was going for, for – okay, I started February 13th of 2013. I always remember that date because I wrote a terrible Valentine's Day joke. Um, Do you remember the joke? It's a, is this the joke that started your career? It's yeah, it's the first thing I ever wrote for and it's for a stand-up purpose. Uh, it's 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 kind of long-winded, uh, but it's terrible. But there's two punch lines and there's even a callback in that joke. I don't think I have any callbacks in any of my new jokes. <laughs> like, 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 like that was, it was pretty impressive. But like, it was at the old club at 21st and Woodlawn. Did you ever go there? Wasn't, wasn't in the state yet. Yeah. It, yeah. So I, that's where my first open mic was. And then um, we, they used to have them weekly out there. Uh, and then by, I think maybe I did three or four there. And then that wouldn't even just, they shut down because they were looking for a new spot. Um, so I brand new into comedy. I have no idea what underground comedy is like. So my mind, I'm like, I love this, but it's over. But then I, uh, guys like uncle Bam, uh, Tim Maggard, uh, trying to think who else was around back then. Chance Carmichael, we, Daniel P. Wardy. Yeah. Uh, but it it was, it was, uh, uncle Bam that was like, Hey, uh, the homie Tim, his his mom owns his bar, uh, Snug Harbor. We're gonna start doing stuff there. We started doing stuff there, and then Barley Corns was not Barley Corns that it is now. It was like kind of run down, and it was called John Barley Corns. Uh, and so, I basically did shit open mics between there and Snug Harbor and whatever various place we could find uh, for like. I don't know how long the break was when before they found the old town location for the Looney Bin. Maybe a year. Uh, uh, yeah. So yeah, that's kind of how I learned how to do comedy and just in front of drunk assholes that didn't want it at all. So and that's a big help. Not yeah. yeah that when, I mean yeah. Once you get to the Looney Bin where people are paying to laugh, like then it's just it's a fucking breeze. Well, I mean sometimes just that barley corns when no one's paying attention and you have to perform or there's bury anybody in the audience like those are things you just have to yeah you need those reps to get yeah. it's a very shitty process but yeah. it's kind of necessary you can't have everything it's like the i sound like one of those uh like what boomer uh uh it's bitching about participation trophies or whatever it's like yeah you got to go through some shit in comedy to to get better and you got to acknowledge it too and i'm not talking about anybody that's performing in wichita now at all i promise it's literally throughout since 2013 people I've met. There are people that eat dog shit every time and they legitimately think they did a great job. And then they get butt hurt when they don't get booked. And it's like, how did you not hear the crickets? How did you not hear that random lady go, Ugh, or whatever, you know, like it doesn't, I feel like I want to commit suicide when I do bad. Like, like I, don't know. I don't know. Everybody's wired different, but that's one I can't, yeah. can't figure out. Um, I don't really know what people think about my comedy and stuff in the scene. I get mixed vibes from everybody. I, have, I feel I have, like I people talk shit. Like, I have how do people 
I do not know how this scene perceives me, and it's daunting. It's like you you hate me, you love no. me. It, like what is it? This I, guy is crazy. I, like I, I'm on the outside of your world, obviously. So I I believe the consensus on you Please. is you may secretly be a genius. I don't want to stroke an ego or anything, but what I my only uh, uh, tip for you because I never tell people how to do their comedy. Roast me. No, no, no. It's not a roast. Criticize me. I think, I, no, you need to get roasted. You need to get criticized sometimes. Well, no, th this is, this, I, I think you're at a two-way street. You either need to go one way, which is dial it back and start doing more jokey jokes, or just fucking go for it without harming others. But, but fucking go all the way. Like Andy Kaufman it, but fucking do different shit because, you know, because you know, your own person. This is this is where my downfall has been, and I need people's help. I don't watch and I don't study other comedians. I wanted I don't watch to be stand up either. I will, well, I mean, there's like I people say like watch this person or watch this person or you, you resemble this. Like I need to I need to challenge myself to maybe watch one oh, Netflix like you're, periodically. You're, are you not familiar with Andy Kaufman? I so just the other day I heard his name for like the first time and I looked him up and I was like, oh, like, yeah, wow. Yeah, yeah the, he was crazy. Uh, there was there's well the, Jim Carrey played him in this movie Man on the Moon and that's yeah. and I saw that actually yeah. uh, recently when I looked him up and I was like I want to watch. It's that. a great movie. Um, but yeah, he was crazy. Like, uh, if if the crowd was shitty, he like one time he literally read the entire Great Gatsby book. Oh my god! To a crowd because they were being unruly. Like he just read the Great Gatsby. <laughs> like, like that's yeah wild. Like yeah yeah. Because I and I need to I need to thank you. And you don't know this, but there was a time where maybe I guess maybe beginning of the year before COVID where I was just like, do I, do I walk away? Do I go hurt? Like hurt or like fucking crabs? What her Herbert's like Herbert mode? Yeah. Uh, hermit. Hermit mode. Yeah. yeah sorry. Blah, 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 blah. Yeah. Do I go hermit mode? Do I retire? Do I go in the cave? And I, ha you, I have audio tape and I don't know where it was of you dying during one of my sets. <laughs> and I'm like, I don't, care what anyone else says at this moment i got wichita's funniest and i know your laugh and i was like dying and i just remember mm -hmm. seeing it like during one of my sets and i'm like that's all i need to just keep going right now and i, I just and i never said thank you to that and you don't know that but there was a time where i was like i'm fine i'll stay i this isn't this isn't approval I, that i i needed not to uh, not that we need constant reassurance and stuff but i was going I through mean, a time we, and we we go on stage in front of strangers. I think we do like kind of crave assurance constantly, but I, this is not like a detriment to your ma material. I, I, I just, you, I have such a lack of balls when it comes to confrontation. If there's a heckler, I sometimes get out of it. It hasn't happened too often to me, but like, I, I just hate it. But you have fucking balls. I'm not saying you get confrontational with people, but like the shit you do on stage, like I, it's, I've never seen anybody do. <laughs> like, like, like you had the Nebraska theme song playing and just saying fucking wild ass shit up there. Just like it's not forgettable. Like, like I could have a decent set. I could have a way better set traditionally than you one night. But people are gonna remember you. <laughs> like, like they're gonna be like what the who Aaron Scotty what? Yeah, my my real name's Aaron, by the way. I'm I don't. It's different on Facebook, like every week. So no, it's yeah. been Scotty for a couple months though, and it's like oh, like he's Scotty I like, on. I like Scotty. My uh, my middle name is Scott, and um, my great grandfather on my uh, mom's side, he I passed away when I was like eight, maybe. Uh, but yeah, he always called me Scotty. Uh, so yeah, just. That's it's kind of cool. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, and I think I changed it after I watched the last. Uh, uh, the last dance or whatever because i remember scotty pippen playing as a kid and stuff so, yeah yeah bowls like yeah, yeah. Chicago yeah. Bulls, man. Dude, that 1998 like the piano music yeah, like yeah, yeah. oh if i could learn that like Dude. that's all that's only fucking song i need to know they, they had it all they obviously jordan yeah. oh, the man. announcer like yeah but, yeah, oh, yeah. God, God, that iconic. documentary jesus yeah yeah uh man jordan even though that that documentary was like clearly like catering to him 
he he still came he still came off as a psycho like yeah dude is psychotically yeah. competitive like 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 i'm scared like keep him on the basketball court like, <laughs> like, like bill burr said about lance armstrong like keep him on the bicycle like we, like we don't want this guy running and shit like you know like yeah <laughs> oh man well let me well so during covid uh we we've missed out on Scotty coming around and stuff. We wish we, I wish I, you came around more. Cause it's like hosting, being there, performing. I'm like, <laughs> some of the subtle things, like you're a subtle genius. Sometimes you say these subtle comments that just kill me. I, I, yeah. I'm like, uh, I'm like the German Woody Allen without marrying his daughter. Uh, 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 <laughs> hashtag shout out to my kid. I love that kid. Um, uh, yeah, so what are you asking why I haven't really been around? Uh, no, but um, but so we I have gotten to see you become just a meme genius. <laughs> like, so it's like you see his performances, but then you see his writing style and his art style. And I'll be at home just like, I'm dead. Like, this guy has killed me. Like, stop it. Just stop it. Like, we're not worthy of this. Like, you're – sorry. No, 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 no. Don't apologize. You are uh, – I'm living my worst nightmare right now. When I, when I started stand up, I was I'm just a little close. Yeah. Just to be safe, I do not want to take when, the risk of bad audio for when, our fans, our viewers. When I started stand up, I I that was when memes were only like a couple of years old, like maybe three or four. It, it was kind of still in its infancy, and I was just like, I will never become a memer live performance that's and now look where we are like i try to make a meme a day a meme a, meme a day keeps the doctor away yeah, yeah. Nah. yeah well <laughs> technically health insurance yeah or the lack thereof but because um yeah he posts like just crazy stuff like let's see uh he was generous enough to shoot me a message i'm going to try sharing the screen um <laughs> All right, I believe we are. So we're just gonna work down these. All right. Um, you want the the history, the origins? Yeah. Of these? Okay. So that guy is a uh, Starlander. Starlander. I, I, I've only I've only seen season one of uh, uh, the boys. Very good show. Uh, catch up on it soon. But yeah, I just saw um, basically this one. I think it had a different um, text on top of it, and then I just cropped it out because I saw that the bottom part, the punchline or whatever, and I was like. Oh, that reminds me of early open micers. Um, and uh, just uh, if any certain early open micers are listening to this, uh, Wichita guys, um, I'm not talking about you at all. I, I'm talking about every single new open micer in my view, because that's how I was. I was just like this guy. Just got it. So it says, uh, does one open mic? Sometimes it's hard being superior to every single other person on the planet. Sure. I'm an artist. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's a good one. Yeah. The tornado coming. Welcome to Open Mic Night. Some poor guy just after a long day. <laughs> he's, he's just supposed to enjoy his this, beer. This guy just came off a roof. <laughs> yeah, and some fucking and the asshole. sun beating all day, and then yeah. now he's, yeah. he's all this shit going on. Okay, this is very specific and uh, not cropped well at all. I brushed here, obviously. Uh, that, that I feel like that's kind of the charm of a lot of the open mic memes is uh, just the sloppiness of it. Because, <laughs> you know, open mic, you know? Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Um, so, yeah, it says, comic giving their life story about why they need to go next. So this, if anybody needs clarification, you'll if you're the host of a mic, sometimes you'll be sitting there, you're looking at the list, uh, the guy on stage has like a minute or two left, and then someone will just show up, a comedian, and be like, Hey, uh, uh, can I can I come on? Uh, I, I got to do this. Uh, my my kid's late for this, but but and it, it's just I don't give a shit. Yeah, whatever. Yeah, yeah. do it. Yeah. Some some hosts say no, and they have every right for that. But yeah, yeah. Um, as long as there's a story. Sometimes it hurts my feelings. I'm like, oh, they're letting so and so cut me because it's me. I'm like, uh. oh no. <laughs> oh, so there is not a personal direct attack. Yeah. I'll be honest. I have seen it. I'm not going to throw names, but I felt like going back real quick. I felt people did not like me appreciate me because it'd be like mike's going on all right cigarette break time <laughs> like i would see people like they would be there and then they'd go out and i'm like i'll never get my chance because yeah. everyone used my set as smoke break well <laughs> i mean yeah i mean not that there's several people like like you got to pick your spots like as a cigarette smoker myself like, <laughs> it's like okay well like uh 
I Shane, like I like love the kid, lo I love his jokes. Uh, but you know, if he's unless he's like, I got this brand new bit I'm starting tonight, like I'm gonna be like, all right, I'm gonna use his set for a cigarette because I heard his other stuff gotcha. the, other, the other night, you know. Gotcha. So, yeah, yeah, I always thought, I just thought this, it was like a direct attack. Like, okay, oh. this one's not an open mic meme. It's just I thought it was it was funny because I remembered that scene in Mean Girls. She says, "Stop trying to make fetch happen. It's never gonna happen." So it's, it's simple. Yeah. Just when your dog won't leave you alone, um, stop trying to make fetch happen. Well, I'm, I'm gonna throw this one out if you could talk about it real quick. This one, mm -hmm. one of my personal favorites was um, you comparing Tucker Carlson to Pigeon Lady from Home Alone. And that wasn't me. That was an article. That was yeah. fucking funny. Great, right? That was I never. That was amazing. I always wonder why. Or no, it wasn't Tucker Carlson. It was uh, Pierce Morgan. Pierce. Okay. Yeah. 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 yeah, 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 yeah. I yeah. always wondered why Pierce Morgan looked familiar, and uh, yeah, it was Pigeon Lady. Home alone. Home alone. Yeah. Growing, growing up, like I, I feel like all of us can relate to Pigeon Lady at some point. Have you ever had a moment where you're like, I kind of feel like Pigeon Lady? Yeah, probably. If she, that, she was in two, right? Home Alone two, or was she in the first one? Ooh, I'm not. I don't want to get fact checked. So she was in Home Alone, one of the I early the, ones. I think the second. One. It definitely, definitely wasn't the third. <laughs> yeah, it, Macaulay Culkin was definitely there. Yeah. Yeah. All uh, right. <laughs> Dude, I have I have some things to say about Home Alone if you want to get into that. Yeah, we can. Uh, uh, like I, the classics, I laugh my ass off every time I watch them. But that movie kind of, like, fuck that movie. Like, okay, so first of all, <laughs> first of all, there's nothing worth stealing inside the McAllisters' home. First of all, it, yeah. it's just a bunch of cardboard cutouts. Uh, real quick, can we actually break through? I, guys, I'm really I get really bad paranoia about recording shit, so I want to get out of the share screen, make sure it's yeah, still yeah, recording. Yeah, it. So real quick, we're just gonna hop through these, but then uh, we'll be back to Home Alone in about a minute, okay? Yeah, so yeah, yeah, hyperspeed. Yeah. I'm yeah. sorry. No, you're fine. Um, uh, just, yeah, this is uh, basically more just like early open micers thinking they deserve more than they actually do. Uh, I've been there. Uh, once again, every single open mic meme is based off of something cringy I have done or have personally experienced. When you've done stand up for two months and haven't been asked to be a headliner, Thomas had never seen such bullshit before. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Uh, Fuck that. Man. My, it's, it's my time now. Yeah. Come to shine. Yeah, man. I believe I'm an artist and you're not. Uh, and, and sometimes headlining is fucking performing in what front of 15 people yeah i mean unless you're at a club then um yeah just i mean it depends on early shows get more people typically yeah and the late shows oh this is my my maybe my favorite so i couldn't use i wasn't good at making <laughs> memes yet and i could so i couldn't use the yellow text so just after you bomb your set and five minutes later watching the next con you're just happy about it <laughs> yeah, it's a yeah. selfish it's a selfish game uh yeah unfortunately yeah uh, yeah i love that <laughs> <laughs> oh, we'll go Ooh, i got a story yeah about this one okay so yeah obviously that was in a, a different we promise we'll get back to home alone <laughs> it, uh, i don't think they're dying uh, uh this was obviously uh some had some other caption on it i brushed out here uh but anyways yeah smoking a cig this is this one was just for me uh, smoking a cigarette in peace. Hey, did you watch my set? Like, I just want to smoke by myself. <laughs> so this this meme this meme was stolen from me from this person. I forget his name. Even he blocked me after he stole it. He's from a different state. He's a thief. Yeah, but he used a slightly different photo of it, and then he kind of. I think. He, it didn't say smoking a cigarette. It just said you watched. You did you watch my set? And that nothing was there. So it's like, how are you <laughs> yeah. gonna steal my meme and make it boring? Yeah. yeah. Like, <laughs> yeah. Like, come on, man. Like, at least do what made it funny. The cigarette part, I feel like, is what is the kicker. Yeah. 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 And I was always like, well, I know you didn't watch my set because I saw you walk out during my set to smoke a cigarette break. So that's all I resonate with it. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. Uh, this is the first one I ever made. That's why I sent it to you. <laughs> I was set. To, oh my god! I was. Is, oh my I was god. host. I was hosting. It was. The, it was some night. I think it was maybe May of 2019. I was hosting the open mic at the Looney Bin, and uh, I was. Super excited. It was the first time I hosted at the Looney Bin for an open mic uh, in a long time. Uh, so I was just uh, stoked. And I saw some memes say, what you're about to watch is a nightmare with, from the Twilight Zone. And I was like, that's, uh, that's me tonight introducing everybody. <laughs> Hell yeah. Uh, me, uh, 
for people in Wichita listening, I recently started an open mic at Little Busters here in Derby. And so I'm, I'm Buster. still, I got a lot to learn. Is there any advice for people who, whether you want to host a show, whether you're a musician or you're anything trying to get something up and running, um, what kind of advice would you recommend to a new host? And yeah. this isn't just hosting people at your house. Uh, a new host, like in stand-up? Yeah. Um, or creative arts. You mean specifically with the craft or like how to get people there or what do you mean? To make it just a good show where the bar, to keep the show going rather than the bar just being like, this isn't working. Well, I, I, this is my uh, uh, leftist bullshit about to come out right now. So I'm sorry. Uh, but uh, in Derby, Kansas, when uh, in Derby, Kansas, where people shouldn't really be at bars right now it's, and, and people should be wearing masks at the stores and stuff. Uh, people that show up to, to open mic in Derby, Kansas during a pandemic are not really a great comedy audience. I don't think like, I, I feel like what they find is funny is like the minion memes that your aunt shares. That's their sense of humor. So, but besides that, <laughs> in, in normal circumstances, uh, I think, as uh, you personally, you're, you're a pretty good fit for a host because you have energy. I think a host should have it, maybe not like over the top, like, well, I'm a comedian, but like, yeah, yeah. yeah. But like, you don't want to, I, like, I feel like I'm a boring host because oh, I, I don't like hosting. So I'm I just, yes, like, he's here. Yes. The energy. What a treat. Yeah. The host is supposed to keep the energy alive and people in good spirits. Because yeah. I've always, okay, was that the last one? Okay, I'm going to write down a note real quick. Actually, I'll just say it real quick because this isn't an explanation, but I've always felt like a Charlie Conway of uh, the Mighty Duck series. Uh, it's Did been you too ever long. see? It's okay. Been too long. Well, for those who are listening, Charlie Conway was a player, and then he gives up his jersey, and so I've always kind of felt like that. I, I'm a better, uh, probably, I, I want to be a better host rather than a performer, and kind of go more the, the like Charlie Conway way and uh, deep, well, the Mighty Ducks. What's your goal as a host then? <clears throat> I don't know. I because here's the thing. I don't. I don't like my voice. I feel like my voice is meh. That does Is that nothing or doesn't, anything? It doesn't matter. You can't change that. Unless, yeah. unless you come up with like a voice, like a character or something. But well, because like I mean, I would have had a voice like Bill Burr. But you. But I, well, I don't. Yeah. So yeah, like, I'm yeah. just like, uh. But I just. I, and that's where I think I. I I don't know. I got that's one of my biggest struggles and stuff. Oh yeah, dude. Like my voice is okay, but I'm like, oh, I wish like man, but I'm so jealous of a lot of people's voices. Yeah. Yeah. Dude, uh, I don't know if you were ever around for him, but there was this guy, um, was Jonathan Gordon. He was a uh a pre or not a priest, a pastor who ended up doing like open mics for like four months and then he kinda he just I, I feel like the church was like, yeah, well, like was this in Wichita? Yeah, yeah. I feel like the church was probably like, hey, uh Probably don't go talk about your dick on Wednesday nights. Oh being a, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but but he he his voice, dude. Like I'm telling you, like he could host a podcast. He could run, uh, do a radio show. He, he just has that voice. Yeah, like, yeah. You feel like mine's like a nails on a chalkboard. It's like Ugh. no, no. I've uh, heard I've, worse. I've met some nails on a ch on a chalkboard voice. <laughs> You're not one of them. Cool. Well, thank you, yeah. thank you. Um. Next one, okay. We didn't forget oh, Home Alone. Oh. But. Okay, yeah, uh, yeah. From Happy Gilmore. Uh, <laughs> we can talk about Adam Sandler. Oh, dude, I love Adam Sandler. God Sandy. damn it, that's my guy. Uh, no, not personally, obviously. Uh, <laughs> ben Ben Stiller's character in Happy Gilmore is so fascinating because he doesn't get his comeuppance. He just abuses the elderly and gets away with it. Just pull landscaping duty. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Now you just pull landscape. Yeah, your back's gonna hurt. Yeah. Like, Jesus. God. He just gets away with it. Uh, yeah, it's it's amazing. Uh, yeah. So, I don't know. I This one is just goofy. I, I just love that character, so I just had to put it mm -hmm. into an open mic meme. So, when, when a boomer is talking during your set, uh, check out the name tag. You're, You're in my mom. world now, Grandma. Yeah, yeah. And ideally, this would be like a really good like comeback comedian yeah, like yeah, you know yeah. like can can work with the crowd you know certainly yeah uh last one. Oh, can can you <laughs> see that this was today right yeah yeah no well no, i made this years ago oh shit well, so, it surfaced i think to, oh well, no maybe it's just because you sent it to me in a message yeah, that's yeah. why it's today. well i i've reposted it here and there over the years uh yeah so i <laughs> i uh oh why is it so small it's weird um 
yeah, the the regular Mexican word of the day memes were really popular. It was like 2016, maybe, and it's like kind of more of a bigger guy with like a some sombrero, and and typically the Mexican word of the day will be like an English word or an English slang word, and then they'll make it sound like a Hispanic accent or whatever. This I just just went on the nose. Aaron Scott Hahn is not funny. Mexican word of the day, funny, and that picture i don't know where i found it like maybe google images right yeah i don't know i like it because the, the reason why i wanted to bring up the memes uh is because the the writing aspect to it so and i think as comedians we need different channels mm -hmm. and i feel like how do you like for anyone wanting to learn how to make like a different channel it's like aaron has a channel of memes how does he if he wanted to build a brand off of it Oh, have I built a brand though? I know, but yeah, that's no. the thing. Like, is, yeah, is I don't that know. It? I don't know. Oh, well, I the only response I get from anything online is on my personal Facebook page because I'm just friends with a bunch of comedians. Like that, that like, on Facebook, like that's those are my people. You know, like I, I, if I get laughter or support from them, then I feel I feel okay about myself because we're all in this together or some cheesy shit. I don't know. Like we're all fucked up or something. I, yeah. Yeah. Whatever. Cause every, every time I see it, like my, I mean, I'll say seven out of 10, I'm like viral, 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 <laughs> viral. Like, and I'm just like, man, I wish I had that. that. Right. Right. <laughs> I, I have had one uh, meme uh, blow up on Facebook. Uh, okay. I'll, I'll, should I send it? Nah, I don't want to look for it, it, it next time. It's it's just it's from Big Daddy um, when the kids like I wipe my own ass and it just says no one the Charmin bears I wipe my own ass and for some reason like got like a bunch of shares and shit like meme pages were stealing it and stuff <laughs> yeah so yeah I guess oh. I made it <laughs> I I watch YouTube videos on Big Daddy from all like time to time and stuff like yeah. there's a that's maybe my favorite I don't know. you know that scene where he's uh, walking around and he's thinking like how he's gonna save Julian. Yeah. yeah. Yes, with the the sweet child of mine. Yeah. That cover yeah. Whatever. When I grow. Up. Yeah, like, yeah. 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 Uh, I've done oh. that a couple of times. Where just like the ladies, like, oh, like, is the relationship over? Is it going? It's like, no, I'm in the situation. And I'll listen to that song. And yeah. Like, yeah. <laughs> You're in that portion of the movie. <laughs> yeah. I'm in yeah. that. Yeah. Just the music playing. I'm just like, all right, like, let's see if Man, I can save it. <laughs> speaking of living, I don't save it. <laughs> speaking of living movie moments, so like, last year, I feel like for me. Uh, the contest happened and that's always at the end of the year and then like i had two very important bookings coming up in 2020 i feel like i was living i feel like i was living the portion of the movie where like the newspaper ads are like just the winning streak of the team but yeah the pandemic happened yeah so uh, uh, do you want to say it i, I don't want to sound like a douchebag and name drop or anything so like uh, i had two really important bookings for me personally and it didn't happen so hope one of them is more than likely going to get rescheduled. That's yeah. the one you yeah. just were. Yeah. Mick yeah. Foley. Yeah. yeah. I fucking come, please. Who? Mick Foley. I love you. Like, but yeah. Uh, 1998 versus Undertaker. Man. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. The, uh, <laughs> the, uh, is that the hell in a cell? Hell, yeah. Did you know that the second time when he fell through the cage, that wasn't supposed to happen? Uh, I, I, I've watched behind the scenes mm -hmm. and stuff where they do it and there were community talkings like I don't want to do this Mick and when Mick Jones right. yeah. and uh, I didn't know I maybe I don't want to say yes yeah. or no but the, yeah there's fascinating a, I think the Undertaker uh, choke slams him on top of the cell and he busts through falls down all the way to the mat and then the fucking chair falls down and hits him in the face like did you see the tooth yeah that, yeah tooth. I think the chair is what did that when it fell down and hit him yeah that was, yeah, that's, and I guess, okay, so my guy I work with was telling me that I guess apparently The Undertaker sprained his ankle at the very beginning of that match. Did not and know. No one noticed. Did not know. Yeah, tough son of a bitch, man. Um, What do you, do you still, are you still active with WWE? I don't watch uh, the WWE, like, pretty much at all. Um, uh, it just, the product is terrible. The product's terrible. Um. But I keep up with, uh, as much as I can, with, like, podcasts and things like mm -hmm. that. Um, I really like AEW. They're, they seem to be on the come up. Um, 
Well, they got the WWE guys who they know the business and right. They, they well, want to do what well, WWE is not doing. And they're, they're they're funded by the guy who owns the Jacksonville Jaguars, his son. Like so, they got did not know. That's why they got a deal on TNT and they have good quality, you know, production and stuff. Everything. Well, I mean, they got they got Jericho, they got Dean Ambrose. Yeah, those guys are always solid performers. Yeah. Um, uh, yeah, Jericho's a perfect guy to like start off and pass the torch right away. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. it did. Was there a moment <clears throat> in WWE where you're just like, I can't watch this anymore? Uh, there's been several times that happened over the past ten years ish. Um, let's see, specific, probably. So okay, here's one example of many. Um, WrestleMania 30, very good WrestleMania. Uh, that's Daniel Bryan uh, won the uh, World Heavyweight title uh, in a triple threat match against Randy Orton in Batista. And that was uh, known as Yeslemania because uh, Daniel Bryan's yeah. big yes. thing was yes, yes, yes. yes. So he's, he's on this fucking momentum, you know, like he is the hottest fucking thing in wrestling since Stone Cold Steve Austin, I swear to God. And then what did they have him do, like, maybe two weeks later? What, what did they write him to do? He's running away from Kane with his girlfriend. Like, like what? This is the champion? Like, Brie Bella? Would that be Brie Bella? Yes, oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, it was... Yeah, they... And so it's just like, okay, so Vince McMahon, like, threw us a bone by having him win the title. But he's like, but I'm going to make him look like a fucking jackass for the rest of everything. <clears throat> I, I, yeah. Oh. My biggest turnout moment is, um, and I'm going to say the name wrong of one of the wrestlers involved. I want to say, but it was The Rock. Okay, so that's so The Rock has. I have seen him from '98 days, 1998, mm -hmm. and I've seen how he's evolved. And much respect to the man. But I was hurt when he was like, Hey, I'll be, I forget which WrestleMania was. It was, I think the last one. And he, he shows up every year. I haven't been active, but he basically goes, um, Oh, we're going to do something that's never been done before. And he gets in a fight with one of Bray Wyatt's cronies. The, like four second match. Or the whatever. four second yeah. match where he goes high, rock goes low, gets the rock bottom just to get the crowd going. Oh, like, Oh my God. And that to me was, I was just like, cheese, cheese, yeah. this is cheese. No fucking way. This is cheese. Well, and Vince McMahon is so he Vince Mc, if it for those that don't know or like care or whatever, uh Vince McMahon is a 70 something year old, almost senile old man who has one hundred percent say, one hundred percent creative control, and he is out of touch uh with wrestling. And they back themselves into this like creative hole. To where they have to trot out the legends just to get people to buy pay-per-views or, or the wwe network or whatever it is now yeah uh, that's why you see goldberg in saudi yeah. arabia it's like what the oh fuck? what the hell <laughs> or he, he makes a comeback and he wins the championship yeah. like so quick and it's like and even brock lesnar he's one of my favorite performers of all time but his matches nowadays are just suplex suplex f5 i'm out yeah uh, and yeah. it's lost that I'm not gonna magic. say it. it's lost that magic, and I'm not gonna say it's like it uh, has to be that real. Well, I wasn't gonna show this to my kid, okay? Yeah, um, Santa's so not real, <laughs> so it's like it used to have like this is when people would be like, This is fake, it'd be like, No, you want to still like this is this is borderline real, um, yeah, you want to believe that, and when it becomes too cheesy and stuff, I, I step back, and yeah, it's a weird, it's a yeah, it's a weird balance because like a lot of the cheese is what attracts me to it, but when it's like, <laughs> but when it's cringe cheese, it's like, Yeah, man, oh god, I'm embarrassed to be a wrestling fan watching this, like you know, yeah, yeah, yeah. uh. Yeah, and so that was that was when I was like kind of stuck. There have been moments, but I was just like for a second, like yeah, if that's what it was. Like no, no, like you can block a like come on, like oh, shit. Blooper number two, headphones are out. Have um, <clears throat> what's this guy's name? Okay, so I'm gonna send you a, a video. I don't know if it'll. Can you take over the airways for like thirty seconds? I gotta piss. Yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm sorry, guys. This I'm is a... unscripted, uncanny. Um, you, but you guys, are, you got Scotty right now, all yeah. by himself. Yeah, you right? guys, you guys can watch me. Um, see who messaged me. So, yeah, who cares? Um, let's. 
I'm going to look for this video, this wrestling video. I don't know what the requirements for licensing and stuff. It's not like a full match. It's just a moment, and it's pretty fucking sweet. I'm going to send it to Mike and see if it'll play on here. And if it doesn't, then uh, sorry. Where is it at? Where is it at? Where is it at? Where is it at? He's peeing, but he's probably pooping because he was embarrassed to say he was pooping. Where the fuck? I just just look up myself. I think I sent it to myself. There it is. Send it to Mike and Perez. And I sent it to him. I'll see how he feels about uh, playing it. He's out of the bathroom. But I don't know where he's at. You know, this is funny because I've been thinking about doing like a podcast where it's literally just me ranting about whatever. Now I have that opportunity to, to practice that and, and, I, and I'm totally not taking advantage of that. So seeing your lane, Aaron, just, uh, or Scotty, it's confusing. You can call me whatever you want. Call me dick face. It doesn't matter to me. So oh, I hear footsteps. I hear a bag. Is he bringing cereal in here? Oh, no. Is he changing a litter box? What is he doing? Oh, there he is. He's got snacks. Dude, yeah. So yeah. I, got, I, got, I got hungry. No worries, man. Fuck yourself. Oh, those chips look dank. Ooh, that's going to sound. It hurt. But, sorry. I sent you a video on Messenger, uh, like probably 20 seconds long, maybe. Okay. Do you think it'll like smoothly yeah. play on this? We'll, we'll, uh, we'll just give we'll it a see. shot. If it doesn't work, then I'll just send people that way. Because okay. it's, uh, it's a moment in wrestling. That happened in 2004. It's the. Oh, we got a message. We got a message. What was Blue's Clues thing? I think we got a message. I think, we, uh, is it mail, mail time. Mail, but I think I think we got a message was part of it. Yeah. It's been so long. Yeah, it's been been a minute. Um, but yeah, we got something from Scotty on. <laughs> Except I'm not wearing a. I'm not gonna say the word over there. It's never mind. Green sweater. Yeah. <laughs> Get green sweater. I, I, yeah. <laughs> All right. Um, yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. This is the craziest thing I've ever seen a wrestling. Is there audio? Okay. Um, okay. Mm. Click the corner. Okay. Uh, we hope this works, but if I hear, I'm hearing the audio. Hopefully, you guys are hearing this too. Um, I'm gonna try to. Yeah. Watch the shit. Watch the shit. It's the best thing I've ever seen a wrestling. What brand is this? TNA. TNA. When they were when they were the shit. Watch it. Watch this fucking shit. Oh shit. Dude. Oh that is and I'm pretty sure his team takes the L too. Like he did that for a loss. Like yeah, wrestling. I wanna see how the other guy there, fell. I, think, I think a slow motion uh, happens. Oh, yeah, okay, and, uh, okay. Yeah, here in a little bit. After th this guy gives an elbow drop and then they shoot. Oh, shit. So it's, oh, shit. Yeah, I'm done. I, don't, I guess it's not an escape the cage match. It's just a pinfall. Just, I don't know. But, yeah, he drops the elbow and then they do the replay. I wouldn't even want that. is amazing. <laughs> oh, yeah. Ah! Right on the chest. And then, right. oh. I think the replay is coming up. Yeah. Let's see how he drops. He's so fucking athletic. Oh! Dude. Because, <sighs> okay, I can. So, guys, uh, this is available on like. Uh, like podcasts like spotify um it'll be on itunes soon uh youtube youtube people you're only going to be it will see the clip but uh thanks for sharing but yeah he lands what how many feet high would you say that is mm -hmm. maybe 12 to 15 i don't know but his the way his knees hit so you have all that momentum of your the, like force times mass and then driving yeah. into your knees and your spine like, yeah and it wasn't a it wasn't a clean land like right. that had to do and he, some and he wasn't like a I mean I'm not saying he was old at that point that guy Elix Skipper but he was he was in WCW so like he had been around you know and that was 2004 yeah that's 
Yeah, it's pretty crazy, man. I don't know. That's the charm of it. Like it's it's insane athleticism and in pain for absolutely no reason. Like <laughs> I I can't eat while doing this. Sorry. Sure. I, this no, you're good. One. Yeah. Um, I am starting to understand that. Um, which is myself. I'm like, ah, oh, too many, too many crumbles or um real quick, one of the scariest things I remember being a kid when watching WWE, and I don't know if you remember this episode, but um Al Snow and the Big Boss Man were going at it. And the Big Boss Man takes, steals the dog. I forget the dog's name. And then he supposedly cooked it. And he invited Al Snow over for, uh, like, food. And he's like, <laughs> he's like, he's like, how's it? Oh, it's good. He's like, how's the food? Is it good? Well, that's your dog. And I remember being like. <laughs> <laughs> I don't remember that. I need to look that up. Oh, my God. He, Eric Cartman. And, oh. It's that he's beating Al Snow's ass around his apartment <laughs> after he. <laughs> God, I love wrestling. Like, but you don't see that. Like, I'm not to say like right. that, but like that magic. Like, it's like uh, looking back, and it's like you know, he didn't cook the dog, but it was so yeah. sold. You yeah. know, like yeah, dude. There's plenty of moments like Kane lit Jr. on fire one episode. <laughs> like, God, yeah. Even the buried alive ones, I was just like, hopefully they have a little chamber where they go into. Those, you know, those always confused me though. Even as a kid, I was like, what? So they just stayed buried under the arena? Like, like what? What about when they have to play hockey there? Like, <laughs> like <laughs> he's got to be out by it's, it's yeah, Sunday. Yeah, they, gotta, they better dig his ass up. Like, it's Monday Night Raw, and they got a game on Wednesday. Like, what's yeah, gonna happen? <laughs> right, right. Um, man, uh, yeah, I, we could talk WWE for a while, <laughs> yeah. but um. We're, we're, we'll transition though. Uh, Home Alone. Let's go back to that. Oh well. Basically, I'll admit I'm kind of stealing these takes from uh, this YouTube series called The Honest Trailers, but they they raise some great points about that movie, and I it, I haven't been able to let that go since I saw The Honest Trailer. But there's nothing worth stealing at the McAllisters' house. It's just cardboard cutouts of Michael Jordan, and like some trinkets so why is joe pesci and uh guy other guy that uh, was a big star in the 90s why are they so obsessed with this house i don't know <laughs> it's, burgers, it's a yeah. big house like they don't but they don't want the house they want the shit inside it and there's nothing in there except pain and torture and just, yeah that it's fucking brutal and violent it's like tom and jerry did you ever see the um, the picture? It's like, how did Kevin McAllister's dad afford this house and afford to like fly his family members like on this so kind many, of yeah yeah. <laughs> yeah even for like ninety four or whatever year that was that had to be a fucking hell of a trip yeah and <laughs> they forgot they forgot their child like that's, <laughs> they're terrible parents yeah <laughs> um all right okay so the, all all I had on my agenda was um. Which that was funny is WWE that came up naturally. Memes, movies, um, top five movies. Top five. Um, I have one. It's always okay. Number five is doesn't have to be a particular order. It can okay. Range some of my favorites. Yeah. Um. All right. I'll throw out a movie called Take Shelter. Take Shelter. Um. Stars Michael Shannon. Do you know who that is? Mm-hmm. Um. Have you seen Eight Mile? Yes. He's the guy that's banging Eminem's mom. Oh, shit. Yeah, he's a great actor. Uh, so this movie um, takes shelter. He lives in small town Ohio. He's got a wife and a daughter. Uh, daughter's uh, deaf, uh, but they're close to being approved for this insurance to get her surgery to be able to, you know, so she can hear. Well, suddenly, in, I think his name's Curtis in the movie, suddenly Curtis starts having these random, like, apocalyptic visions. And it consumes him so bad to where it kind of ruins him financially. And it's a small town. So people are talking, they're like, this guy's fucking nuts. You know, he builds shelter and stuff. And so the whole movie, he, he, he acknowledges that his, his uh, mom uh, was schizophrenic. And oh, wow. So, so, in the end, so it's kind of a, it's kind of like, is it, all, is it, is it all in his head or, oh man. And, and then there's a reveal at the end and there's a scene where, where he's in front of most of the people in the town where he blows up that he shouldn't want a fucking Oscar for. So was yeah. it one of those movies just at the end, the, the ending just brings it all together and just the, is like, leaves you like, the wow. ending made my jaw drop. Yeah. Yeah. Um, you want to just go toe to toe? Just, I say one, you say one, we'll just go up to five. It's up to you. Yeah. Um, yeah, there's a, so there's a movie called, 
And I'm like, damn it, I shouldn't have thought of my five. I'm like, okay, well, this is this is on the spot. No pressure, man. No it's pressure. A movie that you really um, like. Lock. You ever seen Lock? Tom love Hardy. That, love that movie. Oh yeah. my god. Yeah. One actor the whole time. Just him on a, in a drive. It He's is just it is BMW. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Amazing. Amazing. And his life is crumbling. He's trying to do the right thing. His whole life his falls whole, apart yeah. in that car. It's and he's just trying to do the right thing. Yeah. And his wife says this one quote, and it's one of my favorite movies. I'd probably give it top ten movie quotes, but he goes on. The difference between one and never is everything. Yeah, that's good. Difference man. between one and never is everything. And yep. Man. Yeah, I need to rewatch that one. It's it's been a couple of years. I've seen it like twice. It's a very good movie. Yeah. Is it my turn? Um, I'll go with. My, I always say my favorite movie ever is Big Fish. Tim Burton's Big Fish. Um, have you seen I've, it? I have not seen that one. Okay, so here's the thing about me. I hate Tim Burton. I think he's overrated. I I think he ruined. I'm not really a big fan of his art. Like, yeah, I'm not like, ooh, I'm like, oh, yeah. it's, it's nice, but I'm yeah, not, it, I don't take the extra time to yeah, look it, at it. It feels like a 12 year old's idea of what a goth thing is or something. But Big Fish is different. Um, little fun fact. Well, not not fun <laughs> uh, facts about what was going on around then. So Tim Burton's mom and dad died like within uh, two years apart uh, in 2000 to like 2002 or something. Big Fish came out in 03. So no, learning that knowledge like a year ago, I was like, oh, Tim Burton was going through some shit, shit. when he made this movie. So the movie's uh, basically about this guy named Edward Bloom, who's played by two people, uh, Albert Finney uh, as, a, as, a, as an old man and Ewan McGregor as a young man. And uh, it's basically like Forrest Gump on acid. He, uh, he, he, uh, he tells all these tall tales and you're like, is he telling the truth? Or he goes on these adventures and stuff. And his son. Uh, I might try to watch that tonight. <laughs> yeah, dude, it's a, I, I would have brought the DVD. If, uh, but um, his son is played by Billy Crudup. And uh, if you've seen the movie, The Watchmen, he played uh, Dr. Manhattan. And uh, he's just like a normal dude and his dad's on his deathbed and he just like dude just tell me the real you like you've been telling me these stories since i was fucking four years old like mm -hmm. i just want to know who you are it's a very like interesting father son movie because it's not a perfect relationship at all but they they love each other and i love my dad more than anything in the world but we butt heads sometimes sure. and, and i disagree with a lot of sure. the same yeah yeah, yeah so, we were talking about we had a little small conversation yeah. before it was yeah. on. sure yeah um i guess speaking on note of dad because you say this dad story um I, I'm I don't have any kids and stuff. Mm -hmm. Um but John Q. Denzel yeah. Washington it's, hijacks a hospital to yeah. get his son a heart. It's I haven't seen it since I was in the fourth grade, but Denzel is amazing. I love Denzel Washington. He's so fucking good. Yeah. I remember there was a part in that when the lady like lied to him about how they were gonna do the surgery yeah. or something. Yeah, dude. Yeah. I remember being mad. Like yeah. I was like ten years old. I cried. I cried. Yeah. I've cried in two movies that was that and big daddy yeah oh yeah big daddy tearjerker um yeah denzel is amazing yeah uh I, yeah I'll, I'll do one i'm gonna cut movie. ahead oh, okay go sorry i was gonna, like, no no uh, two for denzel one special remember the titans yes, yes. yeah yes. anytime i'm one. feeling sad I, I watch that one i watch that i watch that before comedy sometimes you know like strong leave side. no doubt yeah. strong side like i have to do that to get like my anxiety kill my anxiety yeah. before performing sometimes what? What I love about Remember the Titans is you know that in real life, like the hostility and the language was way more intense than it was in this Disney movie, but they still fucking pulled it off. Oh, like, it's still time. amazing. It's, it's there. It's yeah, there. yeah, yeah. It's amazing. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Whenever you're done, I got to uh, No, up. just, yeah. Uh, that's the, my, I'm feeling sad. I'm feeling down. I got a couple movies for that category. I, mm -hmm. I watched that. Yeah. Yeah. That's a, classic man yeah um is you know, your turn um uh, it's actually also a denzel Virginia. it's also actually a denzel sports movie uh he got game um it's a spike lee directed movie and uh this must have been early in his career yeah about 98 7 something like that um and it's uh the main character is uh, of all people in the world ray allen uh former nba player uh and it's basically ray allen plays jesus shuttlesworth and he is the number one high school basketball recruit in the country. And he has to decide whether he wants to go to pro or go to college. And uh, 
his dad is Jake Shuttlesworth, played by Denzel, and he is in prison. But here's the kicker. At the beginning of the movie, the governor is comes to the, or well, he, he talks to the warden, and basically the warden relays this to Denzel. He's like, the governor is a big fan of, they call it big state. They didn't use like real colleges, you know, just I guess probably for licensing, but it's like the governor's an alma mater of, of big state and that's where he wants Jesus to go. So they let Denzel out of prison for like two weeks to try to convince uh, Jesus to uh, go to big state. Oh, wow. In, in, in exchange for like less time in, in prison. Sure. But he, there, he is, Denzel so, yeah. is so good in that. Fences, movie. Equalizer, Philadelphia. Everything he's everything. done. Everything, yeah, yeah. yeah. Even like, I don't know any bad movies by him, but if he has one, I guarantee you he was still amazing. Light. Dude, that movie, <laughs> I laughed. You ever laugh at inappropriate times in movies? Yeah. At the end of that movie, I'm in the theater, right? I'm mad. On coke. At the dude, no, dude, I'm mad that I'm watching that movie, not because I'm watching a Denzel movie or anything. I was supposed to see Lincoln, but it was fucking sold out. So I had to watch Consolation. Flight. Yeah, yeah. But at the end, it was totally not played for comedy, but they're like, he's like breaking down in the, like, it's the big court scene. And he's like, he was like, I was drunk then, blah, blah. And then she was like, so you were drunk on that flight? He goes, I'm drunk right now. But like, yes, I, yes, I laughed, yes, yes, I laughed yes, yeah. for like a minute and everybody yeah. was giving me dirty looks. Yeah. And I don't, I'm not that annoying moviegoer, but I was mad that day, so. <laughs> That happens to me sometimes just at comedy shows where I'm the only one laughing. I'm like, fuck it. I don't care. This is gold. Yeah, sometimes I laugh at people's stuff. I'm like, that, you should make that the punchline. Yeah. Right. Um, okay. Uh, Movie. Okay. Uh, Titanic. I haven't seen it since I was like five. Oh, shit. My parents yeah. took me as a kid because gotcha. they had to. Man, I'm, I'm a secretly a Titanic historian. Oh, okay. Um, um, just know a bunch of random stuff. Going to be having a show just dedicated to Titanic soon and talking about just underappreciated scenes in Titanic. Do you like the uh, character aspect of that movie more or just the history of like the Titanic the, the part? The facts. Like yeah. the guys in the crow's nest that night didn't have their binoculars because at the last second they were locked up in, a, in like a cabinet. And the last second, the guy who had the key didn't make it on the Titanic. And so they didn't have binoculars, but these guys were trained. They were trained. They had like eagles eyes in on the night, the Titanic shit. Um, saying people say they weren't quite focused or they right. weren't paying attention, but the way the stars lined up with the icebergs and how clear that night was, it created an optical like an illusion. illusion. Wow. Yes. Yeah. That's nuts. Man. Yeah. So, and, but the story too. Um, right. yeah. 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 No, I was just curious. Yeah. Yeah. Your turn. Movies. Um, so many um i know I arrival got... arrival have right. you seen arrival i've heard of it what's that about okay arrival is uh have you seen blade runner 2049 no uh the director's name he's canadian french canadian his name is denis phil new wave uh but arrival is randomly one day like five or six alien ships uh land on earth and they're parked in separate locations of the world and the movie focuses on one of the locations and they bring in uh, this lady played by Amy Adams to, she's a linguist. So it's literally her and these like two aliens, like trying to figure out how to talk to each other the whole movie. It's it blew my fucking mind. dude. It's so good. Yeah. yeah. Interesting. Yeah. Um, with movies, music, books, I just, it's like, it's a crapshoot. It's like, I've seen this and you've seen that. And so yeah. we'll never align. And so people are so different with uh, their movies because it's, they're infinite. Right. Like, there really is, so can much. be infinite. There's so much out there. All right. Um, I'm going to have to go six and then I'm going to have to cut it. and just like, no, I'm not saying anymore. Okay. okay. Just that out there. Are you at um, six? Or I'm at, this would be five. And then I got, okay. Six. What am I next? Uh, you're, I think we're at the same level. now. You got two more. Let's just go two more. Okay. Um, Hardball with Keanu Reeves. <laughs> I rewatched that. Yeah, it's 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 sad as fuck, uh, but kind of goofy in some parts. There's a yeah. It's a coming of age. He's yeah. He's he's lost and he's crumbling, but it's a coming of age yeah. for him. Yeah, I I like it. I, I watched it a lot as a kid. Uh, Keanu's done some stuff that wasn't that great. Uh, I'm not saying it's Go for shit on him. He's a badass. I love Keanu Reeves. Uh, I like him more outside of his movies, the, the good stuff I see about yeah. him. But I do love Hardball. Like, yeah, like, Hardball's man, dude. The G Baby thing is like what—that's all I remember though. Is G Baby so good? 
Rest in yeah. peace, G baby. <laughs> oh no, I shouldn't be laughing. Yeah, oh. yeah not, I mean it's not a real character. <laughs> I know, so watching like, him yeah. raise his arms in triumph took me to a higher place. <laughs> it made me a better person. Yeah, maybe a better person. Yeah, yeah. like that. Is, yeah. Okay, so there's another moment in that movie that's the funniest moment in any movie ever. So uh, he's going to the school or whatever, and he walks past the secretary, and he goes ah, and scares her for no reason. <laughs> <laughs> what was yeah, that? Yep, 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 it's yep, so yep. funny. Yep. Uh, yeah, yeah. yeah. He, he like he gets money and he takes the kids to the game. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The, the yeah. Chicago Cubs game. They yeah, got was, like all the snacks Dude, that too. Was cool. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah I love. There's a quote he says uh, uh, that really stuck with me. He's like, "Until you haven't seen it's, I'm gonna butcher this. Until you haven't seen the game played right, you'll never play it right, or something like that. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And I'll throw out a line too when he's getting uh, he's getting his, he's getting chased by like the bookies that he owes money mm-hmm. and he he breaks his head on the glass. Yeah, and yeah. Goes, no one kicks my ass more than I kick my own ass. Yeah, yeah. And he puts his head through the They're window. Like stainless steel. Like, <laughs> yeah. Oh, Jesus <laughs> Christ. Yeah. Uh, fuck himself up. Yeah. yeah. Oh man. Um. All right. Uh, your turn. Um. Let's see. I'm trying to think of something not. Fucking so obscure because I want us to relate on one. Uh, have you seen Interstellar? Once, not a little hazy. Okay, then we'll, we'll try something else because Apollo 13. Mm, it's been too long. Um, <laughs> hmm. Pulp Fiction. Once, once. Oh, man. once. I gotta look at it with a different lens. Inglorious Bastards? Nope. Oh my God, you're 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 yeah. a disappointment, to straight white man. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> Let's talk back. chick flicks. No, I'm kidding. Um, <laughs> yeah, that. Uh, Along came know. Polly. Yes, you've seen that. Yeah. I love yeah. that movie. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 There we go. Yeah, yeah. That, yeah. Uh, that was my first introduction to Philip Seymour Hoffman. He he plays his friend Sandy Lyle, yeah. the the guy who played bagpipes in that one movie. I love that yeah. movie a lot. Yeah. yeah. Uh, Hell yeah, hell yeah! Long came Paul. That was a good one. Yeah. All right. Ah, going back to Ben Stiller, uh, Secret Life of Walter Mitty. Yeah, that was a good movie. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Ben Stiller has done some good shit. A lot of people. I feel like he's polarizing. Like my grandma fucking hates Ben Stiller. She's like, he's always or old. I don't know. She's like, he's always a liar in his (laughs) in his movies. (laughs) Like, like I mean, he wasn't meet the parents. I think he's just nervous. Like, it's more his case. More what he's written. Like, yeah. But that was, he was just, he just went for it. He just got up and chased it. Yeah. yeah. And just the journey, you know? And yeah. The yeah. soundtrack in there is really good. Yeah. And just, yeah. Um, I remember the trailer being amazing too. Yeah. I, yeah. I was, yeah. That was a movie I was like looking forward to yeah. when I came out. I, I call myself a Walter Mitty. When people describe me, I'm like, oh, Walter Mitty. What's a Walter Mitty? You just got to watch the movie. Yeah. Like, I'm, and there might be a lot of people out there where we're in our own heads. Daydreamers. Yeah. Daydreamers. All yeah. the time. All the time. Sometimes I'm like, how did I get to this quick trip? Like, yeah. Like, I don't drink anymore. Like, <laughs> I just got here somehow. Yeah. Like, I uh, just daily, daily. And so, like, sometimes I'm just, like, so deep. And I'm, I just, I resemble a lot with Walter Mitty. In yeah. Ways. Yeah, I feel that. Yeah. Walter Mitty is a great one. Um, I'll keep, uh, do I have one more? One more. You can do another if you want. I no, 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 I'm, I'm, yeah, I, yeah, I'm going to cut it off with this uh, just because we're on the subject of Ben Stiller. Um, the movie is called Flirting with Disaster. Have you seen that? Uh, came out in the 90s. Um, uh, it's directed by a guy named David O. Russell. He directed uh, Silver Linings Playbook. Um, Fantastic movie. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, ben Stiller uh, is like a young adult, or like not like 18. Yeah, I think he's like mid-20s or whatever, but uh, he was adopted or whatever, and uh, he goes on like this cross-country trip uh, to find his uh, biological parents, and some tomfoolery happens. It's like not a straight up comedy and not a straight up drama, just kind of an sure, inf- yeah. infusion of both. Sure. It's Patricia Arquette's in it. Um, uh, God damn it, what's that? The dude that played the uh, the dad on Step uh, Brothers, uh, Richard Jenkins, he's in it. Yeah, it's 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 good movie. All right, ah, uh, for sure. So hopefully you guys would like some movie choices from uh, Scotty. Some movie choices from me. Uh, yeah, blockbuster doesn't exist anymore. So just <laughs> imagine it's like Aaron's picks and Mike's picks. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The yeah, shelves. Yeah. The pick of the week. Like, yeah. This week we uh, encourage you to watch this. Um. Okay. Uh, check memes, movies, WWE, which shows funniest. Uh, uh, man, I, 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 this, I don't know how long we've been going. Uh, yeah, I feel like it's been a while. 
I do have one more question ish, yeah. or maybe two. I hope you guys are okay if this episode goes a little long. I'm really not sure on that where we stand with time, but um, you have no choice. What was the, <laughs> what was the worst thing to happen to you in grade school? And I can start to set the, the boundary. School? Yeah, grade school. Mm, that's tough because there's a couple things I could talk about. Uh, okay. Can I go first for this one? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So the floor is yours. Uh, eighth grade science class, Miss Marvin. I want you to. I want this to get to you. All right. One that's, te- not, that's not grade school. It's middle school. Middle school. Right? Middle school. Anything throughout grade school. Any right? school. Any, any I school. Yeah. Uh, I want this to get back to you. You win like teacher of the year year prior. Okay. So you're like, oh, I'm a teacher of the year at the middle this school. Is, teacher. This is Miss. Miss Marvin. Marvin yeah. won teacher of the year the year before. Year before. Okay. So my seventh grade year, I think she. Uh, I'm in her science class, eighth grade. You're like, yeah, I got the teacher of the year. Like, she thinks she's so cool. Like at the uh, school, at the, the school, city, the or? school. Okay. Or well, it was just, she was one teacher of the year for like Country? a district or something. It was something big. It was a yeah. prestigious award, right? And it was a big nomination. So then there we are in science class, and we had to do a a science project where we were. Uh, I think we made these like little cars or something. And ours, and I was in this group with a couple of girls, and I wrote. Uh, I wrote, well, we, our car didn't like do well because the girls made it pink or something. Something stupid. There was no logic to mm-hmm. it. I forget what the logic was, but she passed. So when it came past to pass everyone's projects back, uh, I didn't get mine back. And she showed mine to the class of what not to do. Oh. And I recognized my work because I, yeah. I specifically went up to her and I was just like, Miss Marvin, I didn't get my paper back. Yeah. And she, she kind of shoved it off. And then she used it as an example of uh, what not to do. So I sat there on, melting yeah. in the chair while everyone's laughing. And I'm like, that's my work. That's it, fucking fucked up. Yeah. Fuck Miss Marvin. Yeah, fuck Miss Marvin. Um, so, yeah, that was that was a little traumatizing. and Because it's like I had learning disabilities. And so it was just, I was just oh, stupid. Did she know that? No, but that's I was just, I was yeah. like, a, I was like, a savant in different yeah, ways. Like, I was just stupid. It's like, how, how do you expect to inspire a kid if you're just punking them? Like, yeah, you know, I got like, punked big time. And yeah. so that was, that was really horrifying to know, like, she's telling, like, this is what, this is trash. This is what you not, don't do. And everyone's laughing. That's and I'm like, don't do as a teacher. Bitch. Yeah, yeah, like, yeah. Yeah. Don't even do that as like a parent, you know? Yeah, like, it's, it's just a like a human being. Yeah, a human being. It's like a, it's like in uh, Billy Madison when he's like, what you have just said is the most incoherent. <laughs> He just goes on that long speech and he's yeah. like, you could have just said Absolutely. no. Like, yeah. No sense. Yeah. 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 Um, so uh, I don't know if this category is would fall under embarrassing, but it is an embarrassing thing that I did. Um, okay. So this is back second grade. My, my biological parents were still together at this point. It was kind of like the last days of that. Um, and maybe I felt it or something. Uh, well, I randomly, for seemingly no reason, went up to the teacher, uh, Mrs. Taylor, this old lady. Miss Taylor. I said, hey, I said, hey, can I? Uh, probably not. Uh, so, hey, can I use the restroom? And she was like, yeah. I left the school and walked to my dad's work. Which <laughs> <laughs> you've been around Wichita for a couple of years now, so four. I'll give you, I'll get you uh, four years. Up, so I'll give you, I'll get you an idea of how long this walk was. So my dad in Grandma's old radiator shop was on like Lincoln and Washington ish. Okay. And the school I was at was College Hill Elementary, which was like Douglas and Hillside. Pretty long way for a seven year old. Lincoln Washington and Douglas. Like yeah, like, yeah. For a seven-year-old, dude, that's. Uh, I okay. I'll, yeah, that's, I'll, that's pretty far. I'll never forget. I walk into Keller's Radiator, where my dad and grandma shop. I Second open, grader. Uh, yeah, I open the door. My dad, the look on my dad's face, his desk was right there, like yeah. right by, the, you know, like in his, his eyes. I will never forget his reaction. <laughs> it's like twelve thirty-one. Like school is in session. Yeah, and yeah. Little Scotty. Yeah, the, the police were at the school. Uh, and everybody that asked me why I did it, I was like, because I wanted to see my dad. Like, <laughs> like beautiful. Yeah, yeah stupid. <laughs> Could have got molested or something. Uh, uh, for sure. <laughs> and I remember on the way there, there was like this like uh, bridge thing. I think it was kind of by like the I-35 exit and there was a, like a light. And I remember these two dudes in a truck. Uh, some some old rusted up like you know loud truck and they're like hey buddy can you press that button there 
like so so the light would change or whatever yeah yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. i oh, randomly man. remember that yeah. <laughs> yeah. no one stopped to be like where's this kid's parents or Dude, he... my kid yeah. my kid is 10 if i saw a 10 year old out by himself i'd be like they're playing but on like by the highway yeah. like <laughs> yeah. i'd be like oh yeah and, and i was seven but, yeah. uh, kellogg <laughs> that's like ugh. yeah yeah yikes um all right uh last thing because this is like Haley's comment passing by and we got Scotty Scotty Hahn in the studio. Uh what do you what do you want to do next with your comedy? Um I want to save up some money, um, get some equipment, do sketches, and I want to take uh road gigs wherever I can. Uh Denver fucks with me a lot. I like those guys out there. Um so Denver, uh maybe you know, the Dallas's, Kansas City, um yeah dope so yeah stand up like i'm never gonna like quit it fully it's just i don't i could go either way if it becomes my source of income sure uh, i yeah so sure yeah because i i pigeonholed myself right in, in stand up like that's like that was like my only talent and then the pandemic I'm happened i'm sure i'm sure tell scotty has got plenty and, of talents nah, I, I can't play any instruments I, Me neither. <laughs> um, yeah. but, but yeah the pandemic hit and i was like oh i can't initially especially when everything was shut down i was like i can't do the thing that i like or love and yeah um so yeah yeah cool um well thanks for uh thanks for stopping by the studio and being on airwaves and like Chris podcast uh thank you for having me yeah yeah, yeah it's been a, it's time. been it's been yeah it's been a it's been a blast yeah, uh anytime i mean yeah she don't like, oversaturate me. I don't want people to yeah, get tired of it. But. It's like, well, let me, let me, I want to do a, I've never done this, but let's ask a survey um, from the viewers. Uh, would you rather see like just a WWE only episode with Scotty? Would you rather see uh, movies back and forth? Um, yeah, we'll just keep it at two. All right. So um, in the comment sections, all right, just be like do movies I, or WWE. Do, do I get a vote? Yeah. you get Wrestling. A vote. Wrestling. Yeah. Wrestling, yeah, either or maybe two shows. We'll have to do two shows, but I think we Part can probably do wrestling. Yeah, uh, yeah. Uh, but I guess I would I would encourage you this. Then I'll do homework. Uh, you have to watch one current like WWE, so we're familiar with the current state and just yeah, thing we stuff. definitely catch up on what's happening. Uh, I was also thinking maybe like a top three favorite matches, yeah, or something. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah, but yeah, we'll yeah. figure it out. Thank you, man. Yeah, for sure. All right, guys. It's been fun. Uh, we're... Au revoir. Uh, yeah, we're ending this, all right? And... Don't do drugs. <laughs>